Welcome! Today we're on location at Forest Music in Berkeley, California for the latest in my series of contrabassoon profile videos. And I'm sort of excited because today it's the first time we get to take a detailed look at a heckle contrabassoon. By the way, if you want to see all the other videos that I've recorded in this series, there's a link to a playlist of those in the video description. What we'll do is we'll take a few minutes to discover the details about the instrument, and then I'll play it, playing the same uh, selection that I play in all my other contrabassoon videos, which is the second minuet from Box Cello Suites. This heckle contrabassoon is a bit of a coming home for me because the first contrabassoon I ever played was a heckle contrabassoon. It was a 1906 heckle contra. I'm going to post a link to a picture of that instrument plus the letter that heckle sent me about that instrument, and that link is also in the video description. So here it is. This is a Model 43F Low A Heckel Contrabassoon from 1929. Heckel actually made several different models of contrabassoon back in the early 20th century, and each was a Model 43, and then there was a different letter after the 43. I'm told this is a 43F bell design. And despite it being made in 1929, this is a two-owner instrument with the original wood finish on it, so it's unique. The last owner acquired it in Paris in 1949 while he was a student at the Paris Conservatory. He had been studying composition with Darius Millot here in Oakland, California, and Darius Millot encouraged him to study in France. While he was there, he bought this instrument, brought it back to the Bay Area, and it actually has not been played much. And as you can see, it's in excellent condition. Let's take a look at the construction of the instrument. First, the coolest thing, obviously, the low A bell. Fully, from top to bottom, this instrument stands 76 inches tall, almost two meters tall. So you have to be careful when you're playing in the orchestra not to block the people behind you because you're obviously going to be in their sight lines. Um, the low A key here is played with a pinky key down here, so you actually use your left hand pinky to play the lowest note. Now through the magic of video, I'm going to swap out the large low A bell with the smaller C bell, and we'll take a look at that. So here's what it looks like. And as you can see, the C bell makes a contrabassoon look a lot more like a regular bassoon. And it's lighter, which is really helpful if you're playing music that doesn't have any of the lower notes. A couple of other items about this contrabassoon, you have the tiny little second octave key, which was typical for instruments of the time. Somewhat unusually though, the floor peg is threaded, which means you have to choose the length of the peg that you want and thread it in, which means it's not going to slip up and down while you're playing, which is good, but you can't change it on the fly or make small adjustments. This contrabassoon comes with two pre-war heckle vocals, which is very cool, a CC3 and a CC4. I'll be playing the number four today because it's more in tune with my reads. I asked my contact at Heckel and she confirmed this instrument was tuned to 440. Some of the earlier Heckel contrabassoons were tuned to 437.5. Some limitations now. Rollers. There are no rollers. And this is historically curious because we know rollers were invented in the 1820s on the clarinet. And in 1827, the bassoon maker Adler exhibited a bassoon that had rollers on it. Plus, we have pictures of heckle bassoons at the turn of the century that had rollers. So the unanswered question is, why doesn't this contrabassoon have any rollers? I checked online and there's pictures of a 1932 heckle that does have rollers. And that was only four years later than this instrument. So this might be one of the last heckle contrabassoons that didn't have rollers. Obviously, any reputable repair person can add rollers to your instrument if you need them. One personal thing that I've noticed playing this instrument is the left hand pinky. Because the low A key is here on the left hand pinky, I find it confusing then to play the other two pinky keys. Um, I'd probably get used to it after playing the instrument for a while, but it is difficult to just pick up the instrument and play if you're used to only having two pinky keys on your bassoon, for example. Next, the tuning slide. There isn't one. And I again checked with my contact at Heckel, and she said this is typical for early contrabassoons. They had fixed tuning slide. So that means you have to rely on the vocal to adjust for intonation with your ensemble. The weight of this instrument is just 10 pounds with the C-bell, which is pretty light for a contrabassoon, um, and that's 4.5 kilos. 
but if you add the low A bell, it adds an additional three pounds or 1.3 kilos, which is heavier than the average contra bassoon. It was just overhauled, it has all new pads. This contra bassoon plays effortlessly. It has a great tone. Even the highest notes are in tune. Um, you can play very loud and it projects well and there's a beautiful tonal center. Um, also for what it's worth, the Fox extended fingerings work great on this instrument. And as of this recording, this instrument is for sale. You can contact Forrest here in Berkeley if you'd like more information. It is available for in-store trials only. So to summarize, this is a unique example of heckel craftsmanship. John Goebel here at Forest Music said, this is one of the best instruments I've ever worked on. So now let's hear what it sounds like. This is the second minuet from Box Cello Suite on a 1929 heckel contrabassoon. I'd like to thank Ali and Cynthia here at Forest Music for hosting today's session. If you have a contrabassoon you'd like to see profiled, just send me a note, and hopefully we can use it on one of my future contrabassoon profile videos. Thanks for watching.